Hello and welcome to Psychopathology Lesson 7, where we're going to look at biological treatments for OCD. Now, biological treatments generally means drugs, and drugs prescribed for mental health conditions more often than not act on various chemicals in the brain. So, before you watch this, it's going to be important that you have a working knowledge of synaptic transmission. That was a biopsych topic that we covered several weeks ago, and a link to that video should be on your screen now. So if you need a quick recap, then go ahead and check it out. Alternatively, you can wait till the end of the lesson and the link will appear again then. So let's make a start. Drug therapies assume that symptoms of mental health conditions are brought about by abnormal levels of certain chemicals in our brains. For OCD, the chemicals that we're specifically going to be talking about are neurotransmitters. The aim of drug therapies for OCD is to regulate abnormal levels of neurotransmitters in our brains. In this video, we're going to be talking about two different types of drug therapy that can be used for OCD. The first form is a type of antidepressant called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs for short, and it is okay to use the abbreviation in essays and exam questions. The second form of drug therapy is a category of anti-anxiety medication called benzodiazepines. So just a small anecdote before we move on. There are a number of biological treatments used with people with OCD, including things like deep brain stimulation, which is a fairly new technique. So it's not all about the drugs. However, for many patients, drug therapy still remains an easy, accessible and cost-effective way of dealing with their obsessions and compulsions, and it's still one of the most commonly used treatments for OCD. So, on that note, let's have a look at our first form of drug therapy, and that is going to be the SSRI. So, SSRIs are a type of antidepressant that act on the serotonin system. If you think back to the role of neurotransmitters in OCD, which is what we covered in our last lesson, you'll remember that it suggested that low levels of serotonin lead to the condition. And so bearing that in mind, the aim of SSRIs is to increase levels of serotonin in the brain. So before we have a look at how they do that, we're just going to have a quick look at what happens under normal circumstances. In somebody who hasn't got a mood disorder like OCD, serotonin is released into the synapse from vesicles in the presynaptic neuron. The serotonin then diffuses across the synapse until it reaches the receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron. At that point, the information is converted back into an electrical impulse, which is then passed along the neighboring neuron, and the serotonin, having done its job, is reabsorbed into the presynaptic neuron and is broken down or recycled or whatever other biological wizardry occurs there. We'll leave that to the biologists. But at that point, the process then starts again. Now, in people who have OCD due to a lack of serotonin, one of two things is happening. Either less serotonin is being produced, and so therefore less serotonin is being released into the synapse, or the serotonin that is being released is being reabsorbed too quickly. Either way, it results in a reduced level of serotonin in the synapse, and therefore information about mood isn't being transmitted correctly which is why you give somebody an SSRI, because SSRIs are designed to block the reabsorption of serotonin, thereby increasing the levels of serotonin in the synapse. So whilst more and more serotonin is being released from the presynaptic neuron, less is being reabsorbed because the SSRI is blocking the reabsorption channel. That means that the lack of serotonin that would naturally be in the individual system is being compensated for. The increased levels of serotonin in the synapse also means that it's more likely that serotonin is going to bind into the receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron, which means that the postsynaptic neuron is more likely to fire and the correct information about the individual's mood is more likely to be transmitted, thereby reducing the symptoms of OCD. Now, just before I move on to the benzodiazepines, I just want to take a quick break and talk to you about structuring an outline for SSRIs. So when you are writing about SSRIs in an essay, I would 
suggest not following the exact same procedure as I've just done in this video because examiners don't need a recap on synaptic transmission. That was just for the purposes of the lesson. So if it were me, I would start by saying what SSRIs are and what they aim to do. I would then move on to how they work, so with the whole reabsorption, blocking, and all of that stuff. Then I would very briefly talk about the theory behind it and say that it's thought that people with SSRIs either produce too little or reabsorb too fast. And then I would end on the fact that blocking the reabsorption therefore increases the levels of serotonin in the synapse and allows for normal transmission of information relating to mood and therefore, you know, reduces the symptoms of OCD. That's just me personally. That's how I would structure my essay because I feel like it would flow nicely and I feel like the structure would be sound. But it's by no means the only way to write an essay. Those are just my thoughts on it. Anyway, moving on. Now, if three to four months down the line, SSRIs haven't been successful, then you can up the dose or you can even try a different antidepressant. Or you could try a different type of drug. For example, a benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepines are an anti-anxiety medication. And if you remember, one of the main emotional characteristics of OCD is anxiety brought about by both obsessions and compulsions. Benzodiazepines work by increasing the effect of a neurotransmitter called GABA. GABA is the body's built-in stress relief or stress inhibitor. It's a neurotransmitter that has an inhibitory effect on neurons, which essentially means that it makes them more negatively charged and less likely to fire. It essentially tells neurons in the brain to stop stressing. So GABA works by reacting with receptor sites on the outside of receiving neurons. When GABA locks into these receptor sites, it opens a channel that increases the flow of chloride ions into the neuron. Chloride ions are negatively charged, and consequently the neuron becomes more negatively charged, which makes it harder for the neuron to be stimulated by other neurotransmitters, therefore slowing down its activity and making the person feel more relaxed overall. Now when you add a benzodiazepine into the mix, the whole process is enhanced, because benzodiazepines combine with GABA receptors, which then results in the channels being open more often. And if the channels are open more often, then the chloride ions can enter the neuron more often. And if more chloride ions can enter the neuron, then the neuron becomes more negatively charged than it would normally be with GABA alone, which then results in an overall enhanced calming effect. So to summarize, benzodiazepines have a general quieting influence on the central nervous system. And consequently, any anxiety that's experienced as a result of obsessive thoughts is reduced. So, theoretically, a reduction in anxiety comes hand in hand with a reduction in obsessions. And a reduction in obsessions could come hand in hand with a reduction of compulsions. So, overall, the symptoms of OCD are improved through the use of benzodiazepines. Now, before we move on to the evaluation points, I should just point out that in an essay, or even in a general exam scenario, you won't necessarily have to talk about both forms of drug therapy in your answer. SSRIs should always be your go-to. Those are the most important ones. Benzodiazepines can be your backup, okay? Just in case you have to talk about two. Because let's be honest, it's not completely unheard of to be asked to outline and evaluate two or more forms of something. So if that's the case, then you can use your benzodiazepines as your second form of drug therapy. Okay, but if you don't have to talk about two or more, or if it doesn't specifically ask you for two forms of drug therapy, then make SSRIs your go-to every time. It's just nice to have a second option just in case. Right, so let's move on to the evaluation points. And I've actually got four for you in this video. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to do a strength and then a limitation because the limitations actually feed off the strengths quite nicely. So our first evaluation point is a research support for the use of SSRIs. And this is a really important evaluation point because not only is it research support, it's a research study. And studies always make for the most powerful evaluation points. 
So this study was done by Sumro et al. in 2008, who found that SSRIs were significantly more effective than placebos in the treatment of OCD. Now there is a little bit of a twist at the end of this evaluation point because it actually mentions a bit of a negative in that the studies only conclude the short-term effectiveness of drug treatments, with the long-term effectiveness still being investigated. However, this leads us nicely on to a limitation, namely that drug treatments are criticised for treating the symptoms of the disorder and not the cause. So that means that drug therapies could in fact be a short-term solution for OCD because once the patient stops taking the drugs, they're often prone to relapse because the cause of the OCD is still there. So that suggests that psychological therapies like CBT could be a more effective long-term solution to providing a lasting treatment and also a potential cure for OCD. Another strength is that drug treatments are often preferable to other treatments. It's quick and it's easy for the patient because they don't have to go to meetings, they don't have to think about what's going on in their lives and put considerable thought into tackling the problems. They can just take a tablet. It's also cheap, both for the patient and for the healthcare providers, because the drugs are relatively easy to make and they don't really take much monitoring, so there's not much money being spent on that end. And also, getting drugs from your doctor is considerably cheaper than finding a therapist and spending money on that. So these things often make drug therapies a more popular choice all round. However, although they are popular, you can't argue with the fact that drugs, even the ones that are supposed to help you, have side effects. Now, some of those side effects are more severe than others. So, for example, nausea, headaches, and insomnia are common side effects of SSRIs and benzodiazepines can lead to increased aggressiveness and impaired memory. On top of that, you've got the fact that benzodiazepines are addictive. So although the side effects are not all massively severe, they can result in patients not wanting to take them. And then if they don't want to take their drugs, then obviously they become less effective. That, coupled with the risk of addiction, actually limits the usefulness and the effectiveness of drugs as a treatment for OCD. Okay, so those are your four evaluation points. They fit very nicely together in an evaluation section. So if you like those four points and you think you can remember those four points, then you could just plan to use one, two, or even all four of those in any evaluation question or any evaluation section that comes up for this topic. Okay, so that is the end. If you have any questions, obviously put them in the comment section below and I will get back to you ASAP. Um, but other than that, I hope it's all made sense. I hope it's been useful, and thank you very much for listening.